This is the uh, Patrick Kennedy Club Straightening Tool. We're here at Hickory Golf Workshop and we're going to illustrate uh, how to straighten a crooked shaft. Uh, this tool was invented by Patrick Kennedy, who's a legend in Hickory Golf here in the state of Vermont. And uh, we sell this tool on our website and it's uh, really a magical tool. It's amazing how it can take a crooked shaft and turn it into straight. So what we do is we uh, set up our tool so that it uh, so that it'll straighten this out. And what we have on the tool is a series of cams. And these cams can be tightened down in a location and they can be rotated with the use of this uh, cam tool. Uh, this allows it to, them to be turned in and out. Now you can see from this shaft, if you're looking at this, <laughs> so here's the shaft that we're going to straighten. You can see it has a bow going like this, and it also has a bow going like that. <laughs> so this shaft is a little challenging. It's got two, it's turning in two directions. So we'll work on one first and then move to the other. So what we want to do is this bowed part out this side, we want to put that down on the tool and have it turn toward the large cams. So the large cams are, are what we want to uh, bend against here. I've got my small cams turned away. I've got this small cam right on the line and this small cam right on the line. So those are my the fulcrums. Those are the points that are going to stay stable and we're going to bend against those points. So I'm trying to figure out here which way I want to do this. And probably that's the way I want to start. Um, because it's keeping it flat uh, along the board. That's an ideal situation. But you can see how much it's turned uh, away from center over there. And we want to have it come back and be right along that line. So what I'm going to do is make these cans. I'm going to tighten them up and bring them down so that this edge goes about an eighth of an inch over that line. So I'm going to bend it just a little past straight. Okay. So first thing we do is we tighten these down a little bit so they won't move back on us as we uh, proceed. And usually I start with the one close to the center. Oops, I have to hold this at the same time. Okay. And that's a little past center right there. So I tighten that up to hold it there. And do the same with this one. Bring it right down to that spot. Tighten that one up. This one I'm going to, yeah, do the same thing. Bring it right down to there. So I'm just applying a little bit of pressure on these adjacent cams. The main one is this one right in the center. And I want to make sure that it's still tight. Yeah, looks like it is. Okay, then this one up here where the grip is, I'm going to bring that one down to push in just a little bit also. Now as I do these, I've made these a little bit away, so I have to go back and loosen this one a little bit, and then bring it down close again. So I want all of these large camps to be basically touching the wood. This one I can see is not quite touching, so I'm going to loosen it and then bring it a little bit closer. There we go. Now, now they all seem to be touching. We've got it bent a little bit slightly in the opposite direction, and it's pretty flat along the board. So those, those are the way we want to have this set up. Now, these cams, you can tighten them just finger tight, have them be resting against it. Sometimes you need to do that to keep it, if it's tending to twist and kind of turn, uh, sometimes you need to use the outside ones too. But the key ones are these at the end. They're holding the ends. And the key ones are these four in the middle are causing it to bend the opposite direction. So our next step now is to start heating the shaft. And what we'll do is we'll turn on our heat gun. We're going to go and heat the, the first six inches here, and then the next six inches here, 
the next inches, six inches there, the next six inches, and the final. And this will be under this grip. So a lot of times I'll take the grip off to do this, but you can also do it with the grip on. It'll, it'll get warm. And uh, so then when I finished up here, I'm going to go slowly along the whole shaft. So that's the plan. So once I turn this gun on, we're not going to talk anymore. And I'll just demonstrate a little bit in the beginning. Uh, and I'll also show you the use of the heat gun. This is the infrared reader that tells me how hot the shaft is getting. So we'll start now. And that's about the pace. Just going back and forth slowly. I usually find I have to do with this about 20, go up and back 20 times. And I'll, show, I'll show you right now. It's up to 195 degrees. So when I started it was 75 degrees. So it's already double the heat. We want to get it up to 250. Now it's up to 216. Now it's up to 240. And that's 260. So that's enough on that six inches. Now I'm going to do the next six. So now I keep doing this uh, as I go along and then come back at the end. I'll come back and we'll pick up the video with, after I've done this in all the sections as we make the final pass. You can always start up at the uh, top and pull it down. It's running about 290, 280, <clears throat> 300 degrees, 288, 296, 293, 295, 280. If it gets a little low, you just slow down a little bit, but don't stop. You don't stay in one spot. If you stay in one spot over 5 or 10 seconds, you'll burn it. So it's running around 290, 280, 279, and there you go. So that basically is all that has to be done as far as heating. And uh, it usually takes 5 or 10 minutes for this to get back to room temperature. So you leave it in there until it gets back to room temperature. And uh, then at that point we will uh, take it out and see how straight it is. It's good, definitely going to be straighter than it was. And, uh, Sometimes, even with two bends, uh, we got this nice and flat, and then we got it bent away from where it was. So it's possible this won't have to be heated again. Uh, but sometimes you have to do it twice, just to take out little wrinkles. Uh, again, it's ideal if you can take the grip off, because you'll get more heat, particularly if you have uh, a warp up there under the grip. But sometimes the grip section is okay, and it, the warp is more down in this section. Okay, we'll come back in about uh, five minutes after this is cooled and we'll see what it looks like. <clears throat> okay, just uh, come down, back down to temperature. We take our infrared reader and uh, read it. It's about 89 degrees there. 89. 82. Up here in the grip, about 91. Seems like the grip is where it's thicker, so that makes sense that it might be a little bit uh, hotter up there. The, the steel down here, uh, cools the fastest because we didn't heat the head up very much. So we're ready to take this off. So basically what you do is you loosen up the large cans. One of the things I should mention that in using this, you don't ever want to try to turn the can while you've got it really tight because what that will do is cause you to break the can. So you use the, the tool to get the cam in the right position, get it, hold it there, and then tighten. And then when you're going uh, you're gonna to loosen these, then loosen them first so that they'll all be able to give. So it should spring back a little bit from uh, where it was. The cam, so th this is a brand new uh, straightener, so these are sticking a little bit to the, the paint that's underneath the wood. 
Not, not too bad. So we're coming out, you can see just from where it is, we've made a lot of progress. It's going along uh, the straight line pretty close. So, boy, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. We've, I'll hold this up. We've still got a little bit of curvature to it, but it's quite a bit less than it was, as you can see. So we still got maybe a little bit of curve going that way. So we can put it back in and sort of see. Uh, yeah, now I would probably do it there and I would bring it over this way a little bit and try to hold it you know, right about there. Looks about right. This time it won't, uh, won't be bending as much, but we'll get it in the right direction. You never want to go too far uh, in that first heat up. I, when I first started using this tool, I found that I was uh, going too far on the, the reverse bend, and I was just creating a bend in the opposite direction, so I wasn't really gaining any ground. But uh, since then, I've learned you always want to bend a little past the center before it would be perfectly straight, and then that should work fine. So this time I don't think that we need to do much up here in the grip area. I'll just do from this down to there. So we'll come back after we've heated this up and uh, ready to pull it out the next time. Okay, uh, we're ready to take the shaft out again. Remember to loosen all your wing nuts first. And uh, once those are loosened, you take your tool and uh, kind of loosen up the cans. And these are these are starting to lock, come off easier now because the, the paint in this new one has uh, cured a little better. Okay. Oh, that's looking really good to me, Alan. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to be the. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. It's got a little bow down toward the heel, but it's much straighter than it was. So I think that, that club's ready to play with that. So that's the uh, club straightener, made by uh, Patrick Kennedy as the inventor of the club straightener. And uh, we sell them on hickorygolfworkshop.com. Uh, so uh, if you've got some crooked clubs and you want to get them straightened out, all you need is this straightener. Uh, a heat gun you can get from Golfworks. I think they're down to $25 to $30 now. Really good price. And uh, the... Uh, infrared reader that we use. You can get that at Sears and I think they also have them at Lowe's and they're about $30 to $35. You watch your newspaper you'll see it $25 occasionally. So there's no reason to have crooked clubs. You can make them straight. Thanks.